Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. What up, everybody? Welcome to episode 84 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison, one half of the Membership Guys, and this is a show in which we dispense proven practical tips and advice for how to plan, launch, and grow a successful membership website. In today's episode, I'm talking about idea validation. This is a particular pet subject of mine because what often happens is when inspiration strikes and you come up with an idea for a membership website or some other product or service that you're convinced is a winner, all too often it's easy to get carried away in trying to make it a reality without ever stopping to really examine whether your idea is actually as solid as you're convinced it is. Before you invest countless hours and immeasurable quantities of blood, sweat and tears into your new project, it's highly worth taking the time to validate your big idea. So my top tips for doing that, first of all, don't rely on the opinions of your friends and family. I've lost count how many people have approached us with absolutely terrible ideas that they've been convinced are utter genius by their friends and their family. While it's completely understandable why most people run their ideas past their loved ones first, very rarely are they the right people to seek feedback from. First and foremost, they care about you. So even the bluntest of best friends and significant others will temper their feedback so as to not offend you if they actually think your idea is rubbish. There's also a chance that if they don't actually understand your idea or concept, that they may try to hide this to avoid appearing dumb. Usually your friends and family won't be the best indicator of your target audience, nor will they have any real understanding or appreciation of the market that you're going to be targeting, what works and doesn't work, what's already out there, etc. I'm not telling you not to run things past your friends and family at all, just to maintain perspective on the credibility of their input in terms of helping you to validate your idea. Far too often people go down the wrong route, filled with confidence from having everyone close to them tell them how amazing their idea is in an effort to be supportive and positive. So tip number one, ignore or don't rely on the opinions of your friends and family when validating your idea. Tip number two, look at what's already out there. There's no better way to prove that you have a valid and viable idea than if someone is already doing something similar within the same market. Now this is something which does put some people off as they immediately see pre-existing competition as a reason to avoid entering a market, but instead you should see it as a good sign that your idea is one worth pursuing. The flip side of this of course is coming up with a concept for which there is literally no competition. There's a far greater chance that this means that the market and the demand simply do not exist, as opposed to you being the first person in existence to come up with your idea. That's not to say that the latter is impossible, just improbable. And so a great deal of further research and idea validation would be needed to really establish whether you're onto a winner or chasing a lost cause. Look for existing online courses books, blogs, podcasts and the like for any patterns relating to the subjects being discussed, the level of community engagement and so on. Look for what others are doing well and more importantly, what they're doing poorly. Read through blog comments and book reviews to see what sort of criticism is being left, particularly as it relates to subjects that people feel aren't being covered or could be covered better. Get a good idea of what's going on within the market, what is and isn't working, where the opportunities lie, and this will give you a good basis for validating your own idea and adapting it so that you can come in with a fresh approach on a topic that there's already a clearly proven established market for. Tip number three, start collecting leads early. The main thing we're looking to validate when you're validating your idea is that there are people out there who will be interested in what you have to say and what knowledge you have to impart on a particular subject. The actual specifics aren't important yet. It doesn't matter at this stage whether you're thinking of a full-blown membership site, an ebook, or a video course. If your basic idea sucks, the delivery method won't make a difference. So, there's no better way of validating that people are actually interested in your idea than by capturing their interest, specifically their email address, submitted as an indication that they want more information. 
You can use services such as lead pages or Unbounce to put together a basic landing page within a few minutes. Then hook it up to your email marketing service, whichever one you're using, be it Aweber, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, Infusionsoft, in order to start collecting email addresses from people interested in what you have to say and what you have to offer. Now you can choose whether or not to bribe those interested parties with a free giveaway such as an ebook, an infographic or a short video or you could go with a simple coming soon approach whereby you give a rough outline of the sort of thing you'll eventually be offering and then allow people to register their interest by submitting their email address in order to be sent future updates on that product. Then it's simply a case of pushing traffic to your landing page, either organically by promoting it on social media or to your existing list, or by using paid advertising on Facebook, Google and other platforms. Assuming that your call to action and the landing page itself are half decent, you should be able to at least get an initial read on whether there's any interest in your idea or not. And don't fixate on things like that call to action, the imagery, the landing page and the design. Typically that sort of stuff will be the difference between getting 100 leads signed up and getting 110. It's very rarely the difference between getting zero interest and getting thousands of people interested. Remember what we're doing here is validating your idea determining whether there is enough interest in what you have to say and what you have to potentially offer in order to compel people into action. In this instance, that action is signing up for an email list and eventually we want that action to be paying for a product or joining your membership. So that's tip number three, start collecting leads early. And tip number four, test the market with a minimum viable product. One step up on simply collecting leads to establish that there is a potential market out there interested in what you're going to offer is to actually try to get people to buy something that's in the same ballpark as what your offering will be by offering them a minimum viable product. A minimum viable product or commonly called an MVP to use the ever so trendy lingo that the kids are using these days is an offering that's in the same vein as your intended final product where you're targeting the same audience, solving the same problems but you're doing it in such a way that doesn't require as much upfront work, time and financial investment to get things going. Now this doesn't mean that you put out a rushed version of your final product. You don't cobble together a membership and put that out there as an MVP. More so you create something that will achieve the same objectives for your customer as you hope to achieve with your final membership, but in a manner that doesn't require too much upfront work in order to go to market. So as an example, if you're planning on developing a course that teaches people how to play the trumpet, You could test the viability of this by offering a set amount of one-to-one Skype lessons. Again, same objective, same ballpark. You're validating that people have problems that are compelling enough to want to pay for a solution, but you're doing it in a way that doesn't involve you having to create anything or do too much upfront before somebody buys. If you're wanting to build a paid coaching community online, then you could do a trial run with an MVP that consists of a series of group coaching calls alongside a private Facebook group. Or if your idea is to create a series of lessons that teaches someone how to use a particular piece of software, then you could first try a minimum viable product that consists of a brief ebook that focuses on one specific area or task completed by that software. So those are just some basic examples, but hopefully you see the pattern emerging. Your MVP will be something that requires very little effort to get it to a stage where you can try to get some customers rather than spending hours creating a product only to find out that nobody wants it. Testing the market with a minimum viable product is a great way to establish that the demand for what you're offering exists in order to save you a lot of time, effort and disappointment in the long run because there's nothing worse than pouring in all that time, all that money, all that effort and resource then opening the doors to your membership to the sound of crickets. So it's crucial that you follow these sort of steps in order to validate that your membership idea is a winner.
Hopefully this episode has been useful to you guys. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback on social media. Hit us up at Membership Guys. Check out our free private Facebook group for membership site owners over at talkmemberships.com where you can join over 3,000 membership site owners and it will not cost you a penny. Get yourself into that group, talkmemberships.com. That's it for this week. I'll be back again very soon with another installment of the Membership Guys podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out the membersiteacademy.com. The Membersite Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. So whether you're still figuring out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Member Site Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Member Site Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. So check it out at membersiteacademy.com.